From San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Hadoop Summit 2016. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2016, soon to be called DataWorks Summit. They announced on stage today the name of the conference will be changing. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, George Gilbert, analyst at SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, The Cube. Our next guest is entrepreneur, founder and CEO of Cask, Cask.io, CO, Cask.co, not Cask.com, .co. Jonathan Gray, welcome back. Thank you very much for having me back. Great to see Good you. To be here. Um, you know, I've been following your career, you've been, been a really great entrepreneur, you have worked at Facebook in the early days, you understand data, you understand Hadoop, you understand distributed systems, you understand data. Yes. What is, the, what's going on in the ecosystem? You know, some are saying, it's a mess. It's changing, obviously they're naming the event DataWorks. This is kind of like a transitional moment for Hadoop, 10 years now. It's new clothing, new name. It's fitting there. What's your thoughts? Because this is you've been involved in this at a root level from the beginning. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I mean, I, I think there's no doubt this has taken a lot longer than we all expected it to. You know, I think in one token, I look at, you know, I joined Facebook in kind of 09, 2010, and by 2011, we had, you know, multi-petabyte user-facing applications being served off of Hadoop and HBase. And we're talking five, five or six years later from that, and that's way beyond what most enterprises are still doing today. So in some respect, you still have this gap where the internet companies took the exact same technology and did amazing things really fast with it, and then it comes out to the enterprise and a whole different you know, environment, a whole different set of constraints. Security and governance matter already. <laughs> Not everyone is a complete rock star developer, and you have a very different reality. And I think it's taken a little bit longer for it to mature and grow up in the ecosystem, but I think what you're seeing now is, is architectures and patterns emerge. I think, you know, the data lake as the kind of next data warehouse, and that's kind of coming to be a, an architecture and not just a technology, and an approach that organizations are actually organizing around. And I think that's one of the things that is changing in big data is you're seeing the organizations now adapt to how the new software is being used. You know, so you now they get comfortable with data lake, they can put their toe in the water, so to speak, they build the data lakes, now they got to put it to value, put to work. Exactly. And is that a... I think that's the next big gap we have here, and that's what's really going to help the ecosystem to explode is, is the business value, the applications and the use cases to exist on top, and extending all of this great tech into the hands of people who understand the business more. You know, we always say, Dave Vellante, and I always talk on theCUBE about, you know, Hadoop really is about industry standard hardware, obviously, and you know, on-premise, but now cloud's right around the corner, so yep. and it's always been kind of a horizontally scalable concept, distributed networking, yeah. but now you've got the vertical apps, and we had customers on from US Bank saying, look, I got analytics driving business value, that's an app-facing thing. You've got the Uberization of the world going on, I just use that word as a reference point, but that's what app developers are looking at. So, sure. you know, where is this kind of tying together? I mean, you have DockerCon kind of showing that the containers are bringing some, some goodness there, but, but that's an ops issue, but yet customers are want analytics, is there a horizontally vertical connection today? Yeah, I mean, I think what, what, what you're seeing is, and Docker is an example of it, Hadoop is an example of it. There's all kinds of examples of this shift from scale up to scale out, you know, and I think that's also about what cloud is and all this kind of stuff. And now we have to rebuild all of the layers again. You know, the app servers and data integration products and the operations tools and the governance solutions that worked for relational databases and data warehouses and three tier architectures don't really work in this new world. And I think you're seeing now in the whole development operation side, you're seeing Docker just completely grab that entire community because they're saying, look, you had this really easy way of providing consistency and packaging and deployment and lifecycle management when you did traditional apps. Now you have these multi-tier apps with all this open source and all that's gone away. So ops is, is a disaster in a lot of cases and Docker all of a sudden is this breath of fresh air. Here's something that is consistent, repeatable, has allows a developer to prescribe something in the operators to much easier transition to that. And I think what you're seeing now is a similar type of thing happening in big data, which is essentially this crossing of a different kind of gap, which is the gap between the infrastructure teams, these horizontal Hadoop systems, data development engineer type uh, um, skill sets with the line of business, the product teams, the even data scientists, business analysts who understand the domain, maybe even understand some algorithms, but don't necessarily understand how to 
put Hive and Parquet files together with Scoop and HDFS to, you know, connect into your BI That's interesting. Tool. That's an interesting perspective. Gaps, container gap solves the gap with ops. The gap that you mentioned is a, a more of an app business value gap between technologists right. uh, here. Is that where cast.co is solving? I mean, because you guys talk about containers on Hadoop. Uh, focusing on, on your website, focus on application insights, not infrastructure and integration. Exactly. What does that mean? I mean, is that an abstraction layer? Is it like yeah, a new, is. explain Yeah, we think of it as kind of abstraction and integration, and more and more self-service. And I think that's really what is, is the big, big shift here, right? I think abstraction and integration is, is almost an obvious value proposition. I think people understand and it's recognized that Hadoop is hard, that it's low level, it's open source, it requires a lot of low level skills and you really have to understand the technology to get value out of it and so the, the need for abstraction, so what problem the need for you... higher level uh, layers is really, really valuable to broaden access to that platform. The, the easier you make it, the more people you can touch. Right, so what problem specifically do you guys solve to your customers? I mean, what's the number one thing that you guys target and saying, Time to value, essentially. I mean, I think, you know, the, I said the highest level value props that we provide are really time and talent. It's really, really hard to hire people who know how to get value out of these types of systems quickly. And it takes even talented people a very long time to do it. And a vast majority of your time gets spent on undifferentiated, low level kind of infrastructure, not things that are adding compelling business value. They're not differentiated things up on top. And so the more we can help companies find, you know, broaden access to and that your platform. your customer is a developer, or what's the customer for you? Yeah, and then I think the ultimate end game there is also to enable more services, more, more service area, so that you expand more self-service and give people who are not just developers access to the platform. And basically the way that we sell today, you know, I think what you see in the market today is essentially people who are selling down into IT, they're selling infrastructure software, the Hadoop distros, and, and NoSQL vendors, and people like that. And then you have data prep companies, and BI companies, and people who are selling directly into the end users, these more self-service types of tools. And we're taking this kind of, I think, a little bit of a hybrid approach, really targeted on this gap and saying, the owner of Hadoop today is an IT team on the platform side. That who, that's who buys Fortinworks, that's who buys Cloudera. And they are responsible essentially for delivering potentially use cases, but most often delivering integrations to the business analyst tableau. Or they're responsible for getting a bunch of ETL data somewhere so someone can generate this report every day. Or these developers really need this kind of golden data set of pre-ETL'd, pre-secured and governed and encrypted and masked, whatever it is, data. That's that IT team's job. And we really are kind of trying to enable them. And part of that is building a UI on top that they can give to their user. Because if, if that platform team can expose So you're some freeing the IT guy up. You're unshackling him from doing all this. We, we like to say self-service with guardrails. <laughs> so we want to enable them to provide self-service to their users, but we want to have the IT team and the security team and the governance teams be able to actually kind of provide some guarantees. So for example, you know, when you use our UIs to configure pipelines, we track audit every single thing. We have complete lineage over everything that happens. You can apply security and governance on top of all that. And so it's really trying to empower more and more users to access the platform, but to do it in a way that allows the, the platform team to ensure governance and, and compliance and security and things like that. And I think that's one of the huge things that's different from when you leave the, the, the palace of Facebook and you go into an enterprise. It's, you know, I think the, I, you, you think a lot when you're there that it has to do with kind of like talent, but it has a lot more to do with constraints. Yeah. You know, security and data governance and things at Facebook is a lot different than it is at a bank or a regulated industry. Yeah. You know, if you're a healthcare company and you have all kinds of data on people, or you're a telco company, or, or it's very, very different how you have to treat that data and who can touch it and what the policies and, and security and privacy and <laughs> things that, you know, privacy at Facebook, it's kind of on or off. Like once someone can see any of the data, you don't have any privacy anymore. So it's almost easier to deal with. Yeah. And the app is the app, the company is the app. The company is the <laughs> app. And you don't have a whole bunch of different lines of business and a whole bunch of different yeah. things on top. And the, the gap between the products and the horizontal and vertical is very small in internet companies. But taking that, the gap being larger at you know your average um, commercial shop, you would seem to be, or CASP seems like it would be the perfect module that translates what the IT shop knows and can enable then, you know, business value. So I would think 
all the Hadoop distro vendors would want to take something like Cask or Cask itself, make it an Apache project, you know, pay you off, send you to Bahamas for the rest of your life, and then essentially ship a platform where it is, you know, zero time to value. Yes. And I guess so my question is, um, what's constraining them from doing that? From building it themselves or buying us? Buy it, yeah. Well, we have big dreams at Cask. Okay. So that would be one thing. Okay, got it. <laughs> uh, you know, we see ourselves as, as an independent company, okay. um, partnering very, very close with all of the infrastructure providers. Part of our value proposition is our independence. So one of our big value props, not so much to individual enterprises, but some of the big users. If you go look at a telco who's adopted Hadoop for five, six years, they probably have all three major Hadoop distributions and cloud. How are they supposed to do the same security and governance across those systems? It's really challenging. Okay. We provide portability against it. Um, we recently announced uh, Ericsson made a strategic investment in the company. And you know, re part of the, the reasons- Your company. Of, in our company, in okay. Cask. Uh, and part of the reasons behind you know, why our value aligns with a company like Ericsson is Ericsson is primarily a, you know, a services company, a, a global SI to the telecom industry and other related industries. And they do a lot of big data stuff. But it turns out that you know, Ericsson has been using MapR a lot. Other telcos use Hortonworks a lot. Other ones are using Cloudera. Other ones have gone into the cloud. The environment is very mixed. So if I'm a product and services company selling into a vertical and I'm building Hadoop-based solutions, I got a lot of work to do in this ecosystem, which is essentially a, a, a broadening ecosystem, maybe not forking, but a broadening. You can say it. No, you have it's a forking you have different ecosystem. You don't have standards. You don't, have standards. You no don't stand have standards, and you have an intentional differentiation occurring. Yeah. Right. So before, it was kind of everyone was the same, and that was a value. But now, as everyone needs to differentiate in the market, they purposefully need to create different solutions for governance and security yeah. and, and other and types of things. And that causes the customer problems. Now the customers have an issue, and I think yeah. that's going to get doubly complex as this big move to the cloud happens. Yeah, and you mentioned the cloud. A lot of Hadoop stuff How does the cloud impact your business at CAS? Because, you know, Hadoop on the cloud is not really working, and it's from what we hear in the hallways here. S3 right. seems to be work well if you want to do batch, right. why even have Hadoop? Right. So that's kind of like stalled right now. Yeah, it's a very does this, interesting does this impact tra you? transition. I mean, it's ultimately, you know, Positively or negatively? It's playing into our hands in a good way. I think we have tech, we have tech to build to really benefit from all of the changes. However, architecturally, we are an agnostic kind of platform, right? So we treat something that is S3 or something that's HDFS or something that is EMC Isilon or something that's you know Microsoft Azure Data Lake service. For us, we treat it exactly the same. So as we do our metadata governance, security, all these types of, of capabilities, our platform is agnostic to it. And right, so, so I think we have a great story when it comes into the hybrid world. And I, I think customers are going to be really, really challenged um, as they kind of go from one collection of loosely coupled services to another collection of loosely coupled services and try and figure out how to manage both of those. Jonathan, when should a customer call you guys up? Give us some insight into the kind of environmental kind of pain points where oh, they're banging their head against the wall. When the ideal scenario should, when they should call you guys up. What's the configuration of their problem or, or environment? Sure, I'd say there, there's really, there's been one historical way and now we've trying to get, we've gotten a lot earlier. So we are now engaging with people at the beginning of projects and we actually have customers who don't yet have Hadoop distributions purchased. They're buying us first because essentially we help shortcut a fast path to success. You know, so when we engage with customers who are early, we say, hey, what's the project? How do we deliver success in two weeks? So that's architecturally in the front end. How do we do two weeks to get you into production, do that as the fast path to success, and then they'll go and say, okay, what Hadoop distribution are we going to bring in here? Do we want to do it on-prem? Do we want to do it on cloud? But let's start with a win, and then use that to back up our big data so initiatives. So front end, in the front end process. Quick wins to success, and I think as people come to the Hadoop market today, customers, they don't want to do the same way that the, the banks and telcos and healthcare and media companies did when they went in early, which was 18 months of a lot of pain. Yeah, and so is the other scenario that they have sprawl of Hadoop? Yeah, the other is app three, we like to say, or cluster three. Right, which is you did app one and it took you a lot longer than you thought it would, but you're like, we got through it. And you go to do app two, and then by the end of app two, you realize it was exactly the same process. There was no repeatability between app one and app two. I had to rebuild basically all the same thing because the nature of the, the ecosystem is you kind of integrate the projects while you're building your application logic. And so you get these There's very, no leverage at all. There's no leverage, there's no abstractions, there's no layers of reusability. In, in traditional apps, you, you would not write SQL queries in line with your code. You would use 
use an ORM. You'd use Hibernate. Yeah. You'd use these systems that were built. But now people are, you know, putting HBase code directly in their applications. Well, what kind of business or app developer even is supposed to understand the HBase API? Yeah. So. We Making it really efficient too, that's efficiency. So it's, it's all about repeatability, efficiency. I think one of the, the common patterns is companies are able to hire one or two people who really understand the, the ecosystem, really understand the technologies, when there's a much larger set of people around them who are not as familiar. So as much as you can also empower the few people who really understand it to say, hey, you know, I want to really understand how to build an anomaly detection model on network data, or I really want to understand how to model CDR data inside of HDFS and HBase. Let those people, those individuals who actually really get it, build out some libraries or build yeah. out a REST API or build out a connector and let everyone else drag and drop it yeah. or let everyone it's else use it as good, an API. It's just good, good development practices. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, it's not a big surprise, right? <laughs> we already did this and, and in a lot of ways I think yeah. And that's why I think you know my background is why this company is why I started it is I started out building apps on HBase on Hadoop yeah. as just trying to build products and services and get them to market and essentially the patterns emerge. Well, I think you're in a sweet spot. I think this this abstraction layer around application development and having a data platform it brings that best practice to use leverageability, efficiency. That's what developers want. They don't want to have to recode everything and hard code, hard code other disparate parts into their code base. Um, thanks for coming on. Just yeah. take a quick second. To to just talk about what you guys are doing with CAS, hiring, number of people, what you guys are doing as a company. Yeah, so, you know, um, we did our Series B at the end of last year. We've got great strategic investors, we've got great venture investors. We're um, growing rapidly. We're over 50 people now. Um, really, really good customers, lots and lots of, of traction and attention. And essentially, you know, I think the, the, the fun part for us now is that um, We've built great products and, and user interfaces and stuff around really great tech. And I think that's been something that's really helped to blow the door open for the company, yeah. is we've, we've really built great technology that solves hard problems, but if you can't surface it in a way that's really understandable, and if you can't show it time to value in a couple of minutes for a customer, it's a lot harder to sell. And what would you say, it's um, an interface with guardrails, what do you guys call it's it? Self-service with guardrails. Yeah, I, love I that. think the ability to, to show somebody a demo and in 10 minutes walk them through a use case, yeah. start to finish, yeah, guys that, love that would take them a week or two to yeah. do themselves, and you can just show this stark contrast of what the experience is like, and then you say, by the way, I just audited and had lineage against this and this will push into your existing MDM for free. It's all open source, by the way. Yeah. It becomes this totally different way of engaging. And so I think, you know, time to value and, and trying to get up the stack and delivering more, more apps and, and, and things like that is what the ecosystem needs and is what really helps companies like ours get to market. Well, congratulations. DevOps makes IT ops more efficient with CAS. Thanks for Jonathan coming on. Jonathan Gray, founder and CEO of CAS.co. Check it out. We'll be right back with more live coverage of Silicon Valley. It's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with George Gilbert. We'll be back with more live coverage from Hadoop Summit 2016, soon to be called DataWorks Summit. We'll be right back.